Hand embroidery is such a wonderful art and skill to have. In this tutorial, Karen with Studio 21 Market shares her embroidery sampler design. Karen takes us through six advanced embroidery stitches. Now this is our final video in our embroidery sampler series. So be sure to check out our first and second videos that talk about getting started and the six basic embroidery stitches. And since Aurifil is my embroidery thread of choice, partnering them was an easy decision. So I've linked our materials list in the description of this video. And there are so many wonderful possibilities and creations to make when you know how to hand embroider. So let's get stitching. The chain stitch and the lazy daisy stitch is really fun and pretty versatile. Though technically they're two different stitches, they're quite similar, so Karen's teaching them here together. And the lazy daisy stitch is used for the little daisies, as you can see Karen demonstrating right here. They're pulled fairly tight to create an elongated loop. For the raindrops, will not pull as tight, so the result is more of a rounded loop. In essence, the chain stitch uses the same method of wrapping the needle to make the loop, but instead of finishing with an anchoring stitch, it's continued to make the next link in the chain. And the chain stitch is done in vertical rows here for the graphic effect, but you can also use it to make a bold line, as you can see here in the citrus slice table topper. And this is a wonderful pattern that Karen offers in her online shop. The continental knot can use three to six strands and will still be centered over the spot where the thread comes up from the back. So replay the video a few times if you need to, to see the method. It's kind of fun to watch it curl into a little knot. One trick for knots is to keep the looped thread close to the fabric. That's key to stitching nice little knots. If you need more light and a magnified view of your project, I'd recommend the Halo Go by The Daylight Company. This truly portable lamp with a magnifier comes with a USB rechargeable battery, and the brightness remains consistent for a full eight hours. Be sure to use my coupon code SO20 at checkout and receive 20% off your entire Daylight Company purchase. The next stitch is a blanket stitch. And though a simple whip stitch could be used to hold the edges of these applique pieces, the blanket stitch really makes a nice ridge of embroidery thread along the outer edge of the fabric. Now this leaf is a fabric piece that was cut out and fused with a thin two-sided fusible material. Once it was fused in place, this makes stitching quite simple. Now Karen's also placed some small applique pins to ensure the fabric leaf won't be slipping during her stitching. The feather stitch is so graphic and moves quickly once you get it started. This stitch can be used with a variety of widths the way we used it on this feather shape or with any narrow width to make a row of stitching. Now you'll notice that Karen is rotating her embroidery frame to help her make motions quicker and more ergonomic.
I really love the finished effect of the feather stitch. This stitch and the placement of the feather design really adds quite a bit of interest to the finished piece. Karen is using three strands of embroidery floss with her herringbone, her closed herringbone stitch. Now you'll notice that the center threads will slightly overlap, which makes such a wonderful texture for a leaf without leaving any gaps or spaces down the middle. A leaf shape is so awesome when the stitch is used. Now here's a project where Karen has used the herringbone stitch. Notice the tiny little meandering leaves on this project. Isn't that darling? The padded satin stitch is just like the regular satin stitch, except you have two complete layers of satin stitching. This creates a layered effect, which can give you a different texture, and the dimension is really outstanding. As you might have guessed, this is quite time consuming. So for the purpose of this video, we're showing how to layer the stitches without actually finishing the bottom layer completely. We wanted to include this stitch because there are instances where you'd like a satin stitched area to be raised from the cloth in order to give your project a little more texture and dimension. Karen is using three strands of Aura Floss for this stitch. You can really see the difference in the dimensions of the different satin stitches. For instance, the eggplant shape and the jade colored shape don't have as much dimension as the salmon colored shape that Karen just finished. I'm loving how it turned out. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video series. If you haven't already, be sure to watch the previous videos in this embroidery sampler series. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and share this video with your stitching friends. Sign up for my weekly newsletter where inspiration is delivered directly to your inbox each week. Happy stitching!